So in the first two uh, numbers, one, they were asking for mechanical advantage, and the second one, they were asking for the velocity ratio. So you divide that, and it will give you 90%, as you see it on your right-hand side. Then the second alternative is by getting the load divide times load distance divided by effort times the effort distance multiplied by 100%. Okay? So I have realized that most of you had a challenge with uh, the, the, the multiplication and the division. So you need to check uh, properly there. Uh, cross out the zeros, then reduce. Mr. Mangen taught you divisibility test. You are able now to tell which number is divisible by what. Mm? So having got that knowledge, you can easily divide however big the number uh, may be. Well, so we move to number two. Please mark yourself there. Let's go to number two. By using a pulley, an effort of 30 newtons was moved through a height of 15 meters to raise a load of 120 newton through a height of 3 meters. Please, uh, yes, to Sime, to Sime from Mid Hill in Masaka Primary School was saying, ah, in your question, you put meters in capital letters. Okay, meter is supposed to be written in small letters. That unit, you write in small letters. But if you put capital M, then you are referring to million. Thank you so much, Mr. Tusime. Well, if you're looking for the mechanical advantage, the same formula that you have to use, mechanical advantage is equal to load divided by the effort. From our question, we have the load. They say it is 120 newtons. And the effort is also there, 30 newtons. Now, these two have the same uh, units, so you reduce them. There's a typing error there. When it comes to 120 newtons, it's supposed to be capital N. So when you read cross out the newtons, then you divide that, you will definitely come to four as our mechanical advantage without units, since it is a ratio. And part B, I want you to look for the velocity ratio you go through the same method, uh, effort distance divided by the load distance. The effort distance was given, they said the, uh, the an effort of 30 newtons moved through a height of 15 meters. So that becomes our effort distance. And the load distance is also there, which is uh, three meters. So when you divide that, you come to five as your velocity ratio. Then let's move to part C, the last one on that. That one exactly. That is the efficiency. The same formula you have to go through. We've already, looked, we've already got the mechanical advantage and the velocity. So it is mechanical advantage out of velocity ratio times 100%. So you, you go through the same working and then you get your 80 uh, percent. Well, that is it. Those who got a hand, if you've got all correct, please clap, uh, clap yourself and ask for a, a cake from your mom or dad. You're a very good learner. You're a very good learner. Well, today, I even requested those of P5 and P6 to be near. Uh, today we are going to look at friction, and we start looking at friction in P, P5, where we look at different forces. Mm? There are different forces. In we look at forces. There are so many forces. We have the friction force, the gravity, and many others there. But probably here we are looking at friction as a force. Okay? So in, in brief... Uh, friction is the force that opposes motion between surfaces in contact. Please take note of that. And check the spelling of opposes, supposed to be SS, 
there. So friction is the force that opposes motion between uh, surfaces in contact. Is that okay? Now, uh, if uh, let me show you something here, very brief. If you get this box here, now with this box here, when you move it, friction is that force which opposes. If you're moving it in that direction, friction will be opposing it in the different direction. So the force, the effort you apply will be taking that direction, but uh, there's another force opposing its movement, and that is the friction force. So we are saying friction is the force that opposes motion between surfaces in uh, contact. Now, also, let me take you to the types of uh, friction. There are basically four types. That's according to our level. We mainly look at those. Others look at three. So you may not, don't consider much the numbering of the types, but mind about what is there. Well, one, we have the static friction. The static friction. Uh, static friction is that is a type of friction which exists between the surfaces uh, at rest. Okay, the friction we get in those surfaces that are at rest, that is known as static friction. Static means something that is not in motion. For example, if you place that ball there, that tennis ball. You realize that this tennis ball here will possess what we call static friction. It is friction that is enabling it to, to stay firm here. Without, this, without friction, then it would slide away, it would slip and uh, you will find it down. Okay? But because of the friction there, it is able to, to remain in one uh, position. Then, number two, that is the dynamic friction. I told not to bother much about the numbering, dynamic friction, but that is the type of friction uh, which exists between uh, surfaces in motion, between the surfaces in uh, motion. Now, the moment you set uh, this ball here, there are two surfaces, the table, the table and this tennis ball here. So the moment you set, the, you set it in motion, it will now possess what we call the uh, dynamic uh, friction. Okay? Uh, then thirdly is the viscosity friction. Viscosity friction is that type of friction which occurs in fluids, and that is basically the liquids and gases. That is basically the liquids and gases. Okay. Now, uh, like when it comes to in when a, when a fish is in water, okay, it experiences what we call viscosity friction. When the bird is in air, when it is flying, it experiences what we call uh, viscosity uh, friction. Then, the fourth one that we are going to look at here is the rolling friction. That's a type of friction possessed by round surfaces in contact. Okay? By round surfaces in uh, contact. Well, my dear candidates, briefly, that is uh, what we look at in terms of the types of uh, friction. Well, I want to take you to another very important part. Well, we've looked at friction, but there are properties. There are properties of friction. And property one, uh, 
there is more friction on rough surfaces, okay, than on smooth surf on on smooth ones. Please take note of that. There is more friction on rough surfaces than with the smooth ones. When the surface is rough, there is more friction. But if it is smooth, there is less friction. If you're moving in, bi in, bi in big uh, houses with the tails, you have at times, if you're not used to moving there, you find it uncomfortable, you find it uncomfortable for you to walk there because uh, there is less friction there. Mm? And also it comes to tarmac roads, okay? There, there is more friction there because of the rough surface. So there is more friction on rough surfaces than with smooth ones. Please take note of that. Then, secondly, the greater the load, the higher the friction. The greater the load, the higher the friction. That means friction increases with the weight of the load. Okay? The more you make your load to be uh, heavy, then you're going to have more friction. Because that more friction, I mean the, the heavy load, once you place it on the surface, it will stick firmly onto that ground. Okay? And that one will increase uh, friction the moment those two are set uh, uh, to move. When you set them in motion, they, you'll have a greater friction there. And lastly, is that friction generates heat and sound. Friction generates uh, heat and uh, sound. Well, I'm going to take you to those illustrations to b mainly prove that property. Now, let's have that video there for them. Well, in that video, before that, in that video, exactly, uh, there are two surfaces, the smooth one and the rough one. If you observe keenly there, on a rough surface, there is more friction. That even reduces the friction that reduces the speed or the movement of the ball as you see it there. But on the first surface, it is a little bit uh, smooth. That's why the ball, and when it is smooth, there is less friction. So the movement of the ball will also be different from that one. That one is quite uh, different from the first one, okay? Because of the rough surfaces, uh, when the ball is moving, it is moving into those, uh, you can call it, uh, you can give it any name, but it grips firmly inside there. That even reduces the what? Uh, the speed. Because of the higher friction there, because of the more friction as you see it on your screen. Okay? Now, that is it. Let's move to, yes, we've seen friction. We've seen its uh, uh, properties. We've defined what friction is. But also, this friction is very useful. Yes, somewhere it is, it is we, take, we shall take it to be useless. Or we shall take it to be nuisance. But it is very useful. I'm just imagining in a situation where there is no friction, life really would be very hard when you're walking and just falling. The cars can't stop. Hmm? So friction is a useful 
force in our daily life. And that's what we want to see. Let's move to the friction as a useful force. One, a friction helps vehicles to stop when brakes are applied. The moment you apply brakes, if there is enough friction, then your vehicle will uh, stop. But if there is less friction there, then my dear, hey, you can even end up uh, knocking people. Remember for the case of the brakes of uh, a vehicle, they are made of a hard surface, uh, I mean of a hard solid block. And the moment you apply that brake, the brake lever is pulled up and the blocks will press on the rim of the wheel, which will enable that uh, a vehicle, a bicycle, uh, to stop. And number two, it helps uh, when writing. It helps when writing. Well, friction enables you as a candidate uh, to write. Without friction, a pen or a pencil would just uh, slide over the paper. Please, you try it and see. Try applying oil on a paper. You will see. You will not be able to write. It is different from ma making your pen uh, to be upside down. If you make it to be upside down, it will write and will reach a certain point and stops working. Okay? Number two, I mean number three. It helps when sharpening objects. It helps when sharpening objects. Now, uh, the friction, for example, if you have, uh, uh, if you're using what we call a metal blade, I'll show you that uh, illustration. You're using a metal blade, in case uh, that round metal blade and you want to sharpen your knife, okay? As it is rotating, you keep on uh, putting there the knife slowly, 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 and the knife wears the edges of the blade and hence making it uh, a little bit uh, sharp, depending on what you want. And number four, it helps when walking. It helps when walking. Friction is really very necessary for the movement of the bicycles, cars, uh, buses, wheelbarrows, okay? So the friction between the wheels and the road enables the, the enables the movement to take place and helps in lighting matchsticks. Number six, it helps in climbing of trees. Yes, without friction you cannot grip the tree firmly. So one can just keep on sliding and you fail to climb the tree. And seven, it helps one to hold things firmly. Okay, I'm going to show you that as well. Um, well, that number is repeated, number eight is repeated, forget, ignore that. And number, next, it helps one when washing the utensils, when you're washing things like cups, plates, and so on, okay? When you're cleaning those metal pots, the pans, and so on. The friction between the steel, uh, between the steel wool, all other sculling pads, hmm, it makes it possible for you to remove the stains and other that uh, that is stuck on the what? On those utensils. And lastly, it helps vehicles to move without uh, sliding. 
please take note of that. There are so many other uses of friction. Okay? So, you've been complaining, you remove work very fast before we copy, you've got uh, it clear now. Now, the first one, remember, we said that friction helps us to write. Now, I want us to see what in that uh, video there, we can kindly show them. Now, yes, that is friction. Now, for you to write on that paper, whether you're using a pen or a pencil, you need friction. So friction helps us to, to write. They, they can ask you that question in your name. How is friction important to a candidate who is sitting his PLE uh, exams? Okay? So that there is the answer. It helps you to, to write and also to erase. If you, need, if you want to use a rubber to erase th those writings, you need friction. Well, then... Friction, we said friction helps us when walking. As you're moving, your feet need to firmly, uh, you attach your feet firmly to the ground. Okay? When they are firmly in contact with the ground, then you're able to move. Without friction, my dear, you cannot uh, move. Okay? Now, uh, next we said, uh, it helps in moving and stopping vehicles. Helps in moving and stopping vehicles. Now, there is a brake pad. As you press the brake, the brake pad will definitely go onto the wheel. We'll, we'll, press, we'll press the wheel and it will enable you to stop. But if the moment you oil, you will reduce friction and not be able to stop. Then we say it helps when sharpening objects. Okay? Now, like you see, my colleague there was trying to sharpen the objects, the knife, and you need that metallic blade, which is uh, uh, at times, if you don't use that, you can use a sandpaper. For the case of the, the, the carpenters, they use a the sandpaper to make our tables uh, smooth, okay? But if you want to sharpen something like a knife, a panga, the hole, you can use that blade. Is that okay? And that one is common in villages. Even in town here, people do that, okay? And that's a business, you can make money out of that. Then we say it helps in lighting matchsticks. Okay, it helps in lighting match sticks. For you to light the match stick, on one side of the match box is a rough, okay? And you need to pull it and it will light. I'm going to show you here. Well, uh, as you see that gentleman there in the screen, I mean on your screen, was trying to light the match stick. Well, I can still show you mine here. Now, I'm going to give you two stations. Now, this is a matchbox. When you get the matchstick, now it is friction that will enable you to light it. Let me hope I will not light the studio. So, the moment you press it, okay, you press, then it will light. And that is friction. It enables you to light. Uh, the, the, the match sticks. Now, I want to bring in a situation where one side has got oil and see if really it will work. Now, on this side here, I have applied oil, basically to reduce friction. So, oiling reduces what? Friction. Now, I'll try, I want to try and see. Ah, you need to try a hundred times. It won't light. But if you try this side, it will, it will light. Let me do it 
Hey, I should not burn my studio or our studio here. The moment you try this side, it will light. You can do it, but don't waste uh, daddy's or mom's matchbox. You, you are in trouble. You will get sticks. Then we said it helps in climbing trees. It helps in climbing what? Trees. You need that friction to climb the trees. Okay? If you've observed this during uh, or when it has just rained, you will realize that it's very hard to climb a tree. Why? Because uh, there is less friction. Is that okay? You can see that lady was trying to climb the tree. So you need friction. Your hands need to firmly grip uh, the branch as one goes up. Is that okay? Well, uh, let's, okay, that is about the uses of friction. There are so, so, so many. Uh, hey, one thing before we, I had forgotten, sorry. Well, we said friction, uh, if you remember very well, we said friction enables us to firmly to hold things. Mm? It helps us to hold things firmly. Now, I'm able to hold this tool firmly because there is friction between my hands and uh, the object. But the moment you try to make it a little bit, what, I, what have I done here? I've tried to apply oil here in this hand, okay, as you see it there. So the moment you try to firmly hold it, eh, you realize it will slide and fall. And if you're holding a glass, be careful. Make sure your hands are dry in order to increase their friction when you are holding the, the object. The moment you try to hold, it will go down. Okay. So, my dear candidates, let me hope that one is at home. Now, we've seen so many uses of friction, but that same friction that we take to be useful can be nuisance, can be termed as a nuisance force. Now, what we are going to look at are the disadvantages of free friction. One, it wears away things like the shoe soles. Remember, if you're at home and for the boys of power, I know them, they like playing football. You know what happens to your nigina. Within a week, your nigina is torn. And parents are complaining. We're going to on the Mugato. You know, say in one week, that is friction leading to that wear of that shoe, of that nicking of yours. Secondly, it causes tear in machines. Eh? I meant you are riding a bicycle and don't bother to make sure you reduce friction there. What will happen? Lastly, it, uh, it, you, it will tear. It will cause tear in different parts of the machine. Thirdly, uh, it produces it produces unnecessary heat and noise. Of course, when you're moving, it makes some noise. Okay, it produces unnecessary. I don't know whether you're able to hear this. So you're, uh, when you move it, it will produce some what? Some noise and heat. For example, if you rub your hands and rub, 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 because of the friction here, when you rub, you rub it hard, you rub it, you will feel heat in your palms. Okay? So that is friction. It produces unnecessary heat and noise. Then it reduces the efficiency of the machine. Remember the efficiency of a machine is supposed to be a hundred percent. But if there is noise, work is delayed, okay, due to that uh, uh, 
friction so it can reduce the efficiency of the machine remember we looked at the factors that may uh, the may the factors that can reduce the efficiency of a machine friction is one of them then the next one is that it makes one use a lot of effort eh? imagine you're on a bicycle but the chain is making noise you have to apply in more energy okay and it delays work it delays work so that is uh, all those are the disadvantages of friction we take friction to be useful but also on the other hand it can be used as it can be a nuisance force it can be a nuisance force let's move to the illustrations and see now when machines are moving i told you it leads to production of heat and noise like you see in that uh, illustration so when the machine is moving if it is a train moving and instantly the 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 one driving it applies the brake it will produce that bit of light then we said it wears away things e.g. the shoes or the shoe sole look at that and check yourself if you have Engato na enge guolo vegi, then manyanti, you've been using it, and you friction. It it is what is friction that has caused that. It wears away things, uh, for example, the shoe soles, even uh, leading to tear, as you see in our illustration on the left side. Uh, well. That is it. Now we need to see how can one increase friction. We've seen that when there is enough friction, yes, it is very useful. It is very important to us. But also on the other hand, it can be used, it can be a nuisance force. But now, how can you as a candidate increase friction? Please observe and take note of these points here. One, we said by, oh we are saying by moving or by making smooth surfaces rough. You need to make the surface which is smooth, rough. If you're a carpenter, you can use a sandpaper to make that wood uh, smooth okay if you check our table here is smooth that's why my hand is able to move freely but if it was a, a hard one then how would you struggle to move it eh? therefore you the one way one can increase friction is by making the smooth surfaces rough is that okay? And secondly, putting spikes on sports boots. If you're a very good footballer like me, then you know what I'm talking about. Hmm? By putting uh, spikes on sports boots. If you look at my shoe here, uh, you will observe that they are what? They are spikes. Now, remember, as we play football, we run and we need to make uh, different stops. So if you are to stop and you don't have these spikes that will help you uh, firmly grip the ground, then definitely what will happen, you will kusedera. You will kusedera and find yourself uh, down. Okay? So by putting spikes on spots, boots this one increases friction it makes uh, this surface a little bit rough it makes it what rough so by putting the spikes on the sports boots then thirdly is by putting grips on handles it 
can be of uh, of a bicycle, it can be uh, that one of a panga, it can be uh, that one of the knife. Is that okay, my candidates? Yeah, you put grips. When you apply those grips, then you make your handles to have a rough surface that will enable you to increase where? To increase uh, the friction. Let me hope you have got that and it is clear. There is no complaining. Teacher, you have rubbed off. They have remo my, the producer has removed it very fast. We were still, we were still coping and so on. Uh -uh, no. Now let's see some of the rough surfaces that I, I'm trying to talk about. Okay? We said you make a smooth surface rough. Now take an example where those kids are. They had poured their water and the surface was smooth. So the movement, if you've ever played Gogolo, if I, I wish my producer can play that for you. If you've ever played Gogolo, Hmm? Remember, you first have to make uh, the slide. You first have to make the, 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 the ground smooth. You wet it. Is that okay? Now, so we said by making the smooth surfaces rough. You look at on this side, the road, there are... Uh, Mainja, basura ka mainja, blonji nyo. Okay? In order to make it uh, get that rough uh, surface. Uh, my producer is going to play uh, for you that video of the Gogolo. And you will be able to enjoy it later. Now, then, we also said by putting treads, by putting treads on the vehicle, tires, all on shoes, on the shoe soles, and so on. I've already shown you that. That's what we mean by the tweeds. Now, how do they set a question from there? They can draw it and ask you to name. The structure is marked. They give it any letter, and you have to name it. Then they ask you the importance, the importance of uh, those tweeds. So the treads help uh, to increase friction, okay? The treads help to increase uh, friction. Now, those are some of the ways uh, you can go through in order to increase uh, friction. Now, well, we need to see Yes, we've seen how we can increase, but also how can we reduce the friction? How can we reduce the friction here? So one, like surfaces that move, you can use the rollers, okay? So one way of reducing friction is by using the rollers. Is that okay? Using the what? The rollers. Now, maybe s my colleagues, some of you don't know what rollers are. I'm going to show you. Uh, now, if I can make an example here, I can bring in this. I can use my pieces of chalk as uh, my what? Rollers. So, this is my duster, but if it is directly on the ground, the, the movement, if this is a rough surface, the movement uh, here would be very difficult. But if you apply the rollers, okay, then you move it, then you move it, you see? Now, one is by applying the what? The rollers. So they reduce the friction. And I'm going to share, I'm going to show you how really do they reduce friction. I'll, I'll show you that. Number two is uh, by using ball bearings. By using ball bearings. 
Now, for the case of ball bearings, these are round metallic objects that I'll put between the two moving surfaces, between the, between the moving uh, bodies. Then, another one is by oiling and greasing. And that's what we call by rubricating. So the oil and grease, those are rubricants. They're known as rubricants. So you can oil your machine, like what I did to my hands. I applied oil and the, the, the hand was very smooth here. So when you apply the oil into those moving parts, it makes the movement slippery. It makes, uh, sorry, it makes the surface uh, slippery. And if you try to move it, it makes it a little bit uh, look smooth. The surface is very smooth now and the movement becomes very easy. So by oiling and greasing. Then by smoothing rough surfaces. I told you what computers do. They, they use the sandpaper and make the, the, the rough wood smooth. Very smooth. So in that, they are trying to reduce friction. And lastly, is streamlining moving bodies. Streamlining the moving uh, bodies. Now, allow me to take you to these illustrations before we are caught up with the time. One is using rollers. I've shown you that. Uh, for the friends who like, you, do, you call it what? Uh, is that activity, the game you play with those shoes? I think uh, you know it better. Now, even when you are doing exercises, you have to massage some parts of your body. You cannot go on the ground directly. You need something like a roller, like you see what those guys are, are doing. Now, I want you to note, and please don't forget, please write, uh, rollers, they may ask you, how do rollers reduce friction? Rollers decrease areas of contact between the moving parts. Help my candidates to see all those words, okay? Rollers decrease areas of contact between the moving parts. They will ask you, how do rollers reduce friction? By decreasing the areas of contact between the moving parts, then let's move to the ball bearings. Uh, ball bearings, as I've told you, that these are round metallic balls. They are round metallic balls, as you see them. Okay? They are placed between the two moving parts. But how do they reduce friction? They, re uh, they reduce friction by keeping the moving parts separated or separate. So those are the ball bearings they can draw and tell you to name. To wake Santa, ah, Sibira Bangako, Ned that Jesine Mugali, Gugendo Kebele Mugali. Ask your father to show you. Okay? Those are ball bearings. Why they are placed there? It is to reduce friction. Another one is, uh, we to, we, I told you it is, I told you by oiling and greasing, or what we call ruble kating. Now, if let's give them the next one. I told you by oiling or greasing, exactly. Now, as you see there, that's uh, grease, but also you can use oil. You apply it on the rejegere, you apply it in the moving parts, but don't apply it on the brakes. The moment you apply on the brakes, you will reduce friction and they will not work. Now, how do those rubricants reduce friction? They make the surfaces slippery if they ask you. 
they make the surfaces what? Uh, slippery. Okay? Uh, we move to the... Now, I want us to look at the last one where we said by streamlining moving bodies. By streamlining moving bodies. Now, streamlining bodies, you make them a little bit sharp, both ends. Is that okay? Now, streamlining reduces friction in fluids. That means it reduces friction in gases and liquids, if you're used to that. Like the fish is able to move because of its streamlined body. And now that one reduces resistance. It is the resistance of the, of the fluid. Then, even the bird has got a streamlined body. They will ask you, what's the importance of a streamlined body to a bird? It helps it reduce viscosity. And how does streamlining reduce friction? It reduces resistance in fluids. When I talk about resistance briefly, if I have, uh, let me show you these two surfaces. Now, if I have two surfaces, uh, I have this and maybe the, the, the my tennis ball here. So the moment I release all of them to go to the ground, which one will reach the ground faster? It will be this one here because of its small uh, surface. Now, this one will take long. If it was a paper, it will take long to reach the ground because it will undergo uh, high air resistance. But this one, due to, its, due to less air resistance, it will reach the ground what? Uh, easily or faster. Now, uh, take note of that. Let me give you this activity. Uh, please take a screenshot of that activity, and I'll be able to mark you uh, during my free time. Feel free to send on the email I've given you. I want to thank you for being very good candidates. Let me hope you've enjoyed. Now, that comes to the end of this topic of simple machines. When we meet next time, it will be a different one. I want to wish you a good day. May God bless you. Somera mudiro lyo nge wagidua Maryland High School elisangiwe ntebe Somero lya bawala na balenzi dusomesa arts and sciences okubire dela kusimye soka okutukira dela kusimye yomukaga ngali sangibwa mu kifechi wewe po bulunje tuli ne bisule byomulembe science laboratory sakoni computer lab Chakabi ku Airtel fuka nata mego we chitundu cho okume mikwano jo na abolu ganda ngaba yungi duwa kumukutu e chindu chino chitufu yoko mosindikira abantu abandi yoko mofu na bonus bonus ona kwewa ajano mkosi